Hello it's Joey and today we're making pocket flips which sit or flip on the top of a journal page and what's absolutely fabulous about each of these is they are unbelievably quick and easy to make and they just need a single book page so you just need for each one of these a page from a book like this and we can very quickly and easily turn it into a pocket flip like these. I've made up quite a few samples and I'm going to share a few different ways of decorating them today. This one has black paper which I've splattered with gold paint and some other paint with mica in it just to give it that night sky effect, something a little bit different for a New York junk journal. I've also added some collage which is always fun. I have another example here which is one with some branches, some leaves, a botanical feel. Here's another. And I've also done one with a little bit of doodling, some doodle spots here, and I've added a mushroom, which felt really good to collage and complement the colours on the left here. So each of these would just sit on the top of a journal page. So let me show you and give you an example. So if you have a junk journal and you want to just add an extra element, you could take one of your pocket flips, you could take maybe a paper clip to affix it and just pop it over the top of a page like that, add a paper clip at the top if you want to and each of them has a little space for journaling inside. They also have a pocket at the front here like this and a second pocket at the back so you could add little extras if you wanted to and that also means they're absolutely perfect for using as happy mail as well as in your junk journal. So let's have a look at the process steps and get on with making a few of these lovely little pocket flips. The first tip that I wanted to share is choosing a book page that's going to work really well for many of these decorative designs and this is an example of a book that I think will work really well tear a page out. So this is a little bit yellowing, it's got that vanilla quality to it. Probably most importantly it's roughly the right size so there isn't an absolutely precise size to have but thinking that this is going to be a pocket flip that involves some folding we're going to lose some size, some real estate. So I'm starting with a book that is so the book page is about 15 centimetres wide, which is six inches, and it is 23 centimetres in height, so that is just over nine inches. So I've chosen a book page that is big enough, but there's something rather magical that happens when we fold this and make it into this little pocket flip that's to do with size. I have made some pocket flips before that were bigger, so you may have seen some of these that I made up and I actually made them from envelopes. So there's a couple of envelopes per pocket flip here. These are a completely different shape and that affects, I think, where we might put them, which pages we might put them on. But also, I think these become a lot easier to decorate and it means we can really speed up and if you want to, you can do some mass making. So the other element, the other feature of the book page that... I think is worth thinking about is how matte and absorbent this is. So I've gone for a book that is actually quite a modern book, it isn't really an old one, but I wasn't using it, and it's got that gorgeous matte texture, and the reason that I think that's quite useful is if you want to paint on it, so if you want to add some of your own artistic elements it will absorb the paint beautifully and I think works really well for sort of autumn winter ephemera and I think it contrasts really well if you want to add some vintage style collage. So there's a few reasons why I've chosen this particular book page. So why don't we tear a, tear a couple of pages out and we'll do the folding and the cutting which is also incredibly easy. So with all of my videos, well most of my videos, the ones where I think it helps, I am trying to give you some process steps. So here are the process steps to make a pocket flip from one book page. Just the sort of broad steps that I thought might be useful if you wanted to do a screenshot of this. 
save it and then refer to it later. I'll let you into a secret, I've been using my old process steps from other videos to help me just remind myself how to make some items without having to watch a whole video. So let's get on and do the folding, a bit of trimming and then we have lots to do to play at covering the cover. So I'm going to take my book page and I'm going to fold it in half height wise. So I'm just going to take it like this and fold it as neatly as possible in half. And really what we're doing is just, I guess, emulating or trying to repeat by using a book page what we did using those envelopes to make those other style of pocket flips. So a nice crisp fold height wise and then we're going to help ourselves to help ourselves turn this into a pocket by folding up the top and the bottom. Let me get my little bone folder because I want these to be nice and crisp. And I've folded up about a centimetre top and bottom. Be as neat as you can. But they don't have to be absolutely precise. What we're doing is giving ourselves a bit of a border for making the pocket, which is all this really is. It's a pocket folded in half. So now what I'm going to do is take a few little snips, some little pieces out of this, and I'll start with a very small piece of pie just at the top and bottom. So I'm basically snipping just either side of that middle fold and I'm taking the nub of my scissors, the tip of my scissors, just to where this flap folds. So I've got a piece out of here and exactly the same a piece out of there. Again, doesn't need to be absolutely doesn't need to be absolutely identical top and bottom, we're just taking a piece out. And then I'm going to take a sliver off each corner. So just very easily work around it. And what I'm doing by taking these corner pieces off is making life easy when we come to do the gluing. So I'm making it so that little bits don't stick out. And we'll try and illustrate that. So now I've got a book page with a slice of pie out, top and bottom, and all four of my corners have been taken off. So it's time to do a bit of gluing. Uh, so I will turn it horizontally, take a glue stick, which is probably the strongest glue rather than a wet glue, and the first thing I'll do is take my upper flaps and I'm going to glue them down. So a bit of glue on each of those, press it down, and already these will give the pocket flips just a little bit more strength. Then I'm going to glue each of these flaps to the top, but I'm going to do it by putting glue on the outside. So fold your little flap in and put the glue on, fold your little flap in and put the glue on. And you can see that because we took a sliver off the corners, I'm not worried that any of this flap here is going to stick out on the side. So it just means we are making life easy if we're not absolutely perfect in some of our folding, which I'm definitely not. And that gives us the main structure. How easy was that? All I need to do is decide whether I want my little pockets, top and bottom, to open from the right. So do I want my little pocket areas to be from the right, or do I maybe, have I got one on the left? Yes. Do I want them to open on the left? And it might affect how you decorate the front. So if I say I want them to open on the right, I think I will just fold that over. And what I've just done is fold it so that the text is not upright. So it's the wrong way up on the front because I'm going to cover that which means that if I care about this, and you may not, when I open it, if any of this is visible from the inside, the text here will be the right way up. So I've folded it so that my text is completely the wrong way up on the front because I don't care because I'm going to cover it 
with some decorative papers. And that is the basics of a pocket flip. It really is that easy. What we can do now is have a go at playing at decorating it. This bird design came about really because I was playing at making some interesting papers and I just think it works really well with a, a bit of a contrast background, something different from using just the plain book page. So I thought I would share how I made those. I won't make them today. If you're interested I can do a video on how I've been creating some interesting papers. This is one that I shared last week when I made some journal cards and I've been using mica paint so this is it was really a test sample actually of some nice white paint so these have got different shades of mica in them as you can see from teal and green gold and a bit of a, a copper here so I had a little bit of a play at stripes with those and then stamped out some leaves and I carried on I had a little bit of an enthusiastic afternoon so I took some other black pieces of cardstock. In fact, probably useful to show you the cardstock that I used. Is it cardstock? Is it paper? It's 160 GSM, so not incredibly thick, but it's beautifully dark black and matte, which I really like. And it came from Hobbycraft, which is my local craft shop. So thicker than copy paper, but probably not cardstock actually. And I've been having a play at splatting in different ways. This was one I really liked. I think this went on, I think this actually went on this particular one. This is lots of splats with the same paint. And then I've also added some lovely gold. So from the similar gold set that I have. These are both from Stationery Pal. Check out for a discount code. I can see copper and quite a yellowy gold on that one and I quite like that. I've added a little bit of green from my Curitaki palette, but I've also had a play at using some of my acrylic paints and smooshing across with an acrylic block and you get a different effect. More splats, but wider apart. And on this one, I diluted acrylic gold paint and really went from it for it. I used a box to splat into and I've added some lilac on that one. And this one I sprayed mica on as well as splatting. So there really is no end to the different styles you can create. And any of these would work, I think, as backgrounds to just add that little something different and extra as the seasons change. That's copper and gold. This one I really like and it started to feel a bit more as if we had texture on the page. That's acrylic smooshing. And then this one I added silver into the colours that I smooshed. I think it's that way up for some reason. And this one reminded me of old pieces of wood that you find in the forest. A splatted green on top and it's a bit like that, dare I say, the rotting debris on the floor of a forest when you pick up a piece of wood and you see all sorts of colours in it. So if you have any of the black paper, if you have any of these types of paint, you could have a go at making your own splat black paper and it's a huge amount of fun. So let's have a go at tearing a piece off and using it for the backing. But if you don't have the black paper, you can still do all sorts of things in lots of different ways, collaging on the front, and I'll give you some tips and ideas for how to do that too. So let's break up one of these larger pieces. Let's pick, let's pick the splattered night sky, and I'm just going to tear a piece off and glue that on the front. So I want to tear a piece off this that is the width of my little front of my pocket flip. So I think the easiest thing to do is literally just make a mark with a pencil and tear it. You can cut it if you like. I quite like some of the rough edge that comes from tearing. So I'll make a mark and I think I'll just fold it. I'm sure I'm going to go through lots of these pieces of black splattered paper. The effect of having it in the background. It's just quite appealing and a bit different. And you can play with any of your paints that you have so they don't have to have mica in. It's fun, you can represent the season that you're in with the colours that you're choosing to use. And splatting is, let's be honest, very therapeutic. I think so anyway. So tear that down. 
And that is going to go on our background, covering up the text that is upside down. So I need a bit of glue for that. I think I will use a liquid glue for this part. A bit of glue around there and in the middle. So plenty today, all over. And that can go there. Try and line it up neatly. I don't think these are meant to be the most neat project, which perhaps is another blessing. And it's really, really easy to make quite a few of them. I'll fold that over the top and just use the fold to tear that off. And that will be good for another one. So I've got my background and there's a little bit of movement in these splats. I gave it a really good thwack when I was I had the paper in the box and I was just getting the splats of paint onto it. And I really think that helps with the background. So now all I'm going to do is a little bit of collage and add a focal point. So I'll start with using a bird. I've got a few in my pot here and some, oh, some butterflies too. They would work nicely. Some of them have been cut out neatly-ish. Some of them I like to tear so I just keep them with a, a fair amount of white around them and I can tear or cut if I want. So why don't we just pick one of my lovely birds. They're gorgeous these aren't they? Birds work on so many different projects. That one is very tall height wise and I don't think he's right sticking out. Although I don't know. I may be wrong, I think that would work actually. I think what I'll do is I'll stick to, let's go for this little chap. I think he's a thrush with a little bit of dot on his tummy. And he is going to go on here. But I'm going to put some matting, some backing behind, which I really think helps make the image pop. So I'm going to start with using a bit of fabric. And I said in a video, maybe the last one, maybe the one before, I was going to be using fabric a bit more and I am going to have a play today with a strip from some of these pieces and they're all perfect and I like them because they've all got something bright in them and they've got some pattern that's relatively delicate so I can take a small piece off and still see a whole image. I really like this one in particular that for me it's just got a bit of a Christmassy feel with the red and the yellow. The, the orange on this is beautiful and I think goes incredibly well if you want some of that autumn feel in your images. And then I pulled out this one because it's also got some of those rusty colours um, and a little bit of an apricot and a sage green in the leaf. So I think any of these would work. I think what I'll do is I'll take a piece of the orangey one. Let's take a piece of this off. I'm just going to cut it and I thought maybe bearing in mind the size of the image I think about a centimetre and a half width of strip which will give me some colour and again I've got small image here so I still get to see that it's a flower take that up it's not a desperately straight line and it doesn't matter and I will get that on and I think I'll have the orange at the top so that I see the vast majority of it. Let me find my glue again. Here we are. So, get a glue on my fabric. Just glue that down. Remembering to keep my pockets to the right, which is where I wanted them to be. I'm going to have an upright, just like that, a flash of orange trim it off and then I will add a few more elements upright and horizontally. What I'm finding really easy to add extra texture and interest is a few of my little washi tapes. These are very delicate narrow ones. Uh, I have a set of ten with all with different patterns on but they're all black and white which is really quite useful it doesn't take away from the main design, it doesn't add extra colour. I have a little bit of that and maybe some scrap paper horizontally. So I want something, I want something a bit tattier than this is to begin with. So I'm going to rip 
that down a bit. So I think I'll have something across here. So I'll have a horizontal and a vertical, or roughly, roughly horizontal and vertical. Goodly amount of glue. So I'm creating a mat to go behind the bird. I'm doing it in complementary colours. I'm not covering up too much of that splatted paper behind so I still get to see it. And I want to add a bit more interest down here. So I've got some, just a little bit of brown paper. Just a little piece of that maybe. I don't want to cover up too much but I like the layering. I'll just reduce the size a bit. That's better. I don't want to lose too much of my black. So he can go on. It looks so much better already, I think. And I think I will position my bird so I can see where he's going to go. And just something I like doing is giving the bird a little bit more of a place to sit with another piece of washi. So I'm halving that, or thereabouts, down the middle. It's so sticky. And that can go, I think we'll have it that way up. That can go on there. And then I can add some glue to my bird and put him on top. And let's see how unbelievably simple it is. If you think how quick it is to put together the basic pocket, the pocket flip, and then just play with your images and your bits and bobs and your scraps. So that's a front and you can use anything you like. You could put mushrooms on, you can paint, you could put butterflies, all sorts. So I also thought it would be nice to put a space for journaling in here. So again, I think I'll just take a piece of brown paper, maybe that's a bit big. This is either Ikea or Amazon packing paper, which I like to use in lots of projects. Put a bit of glue on that. And it's crinkly and it's wrinkled and I like it like that. That can go there. You could write on it then, we've got a journaling spot. And I do think it's good to break these up with just a little bit of something, maybe down there. So just a label, just something with some text. And this again is in neutral colours. So I've got my first decorated pocket flip with space to journal. Shall we have a go at making one or two more? Design number two is this one with a little bit of painting, incredibly easy. And if you wanted to see me have a go at this style of very freestyle branches and leaves, maybe with a bit of green or maybe with some more autumnal colours. I did a video recently where I painted on some envelope pocket flips. Or the envelope pocket? No, the envelope pockets with a, an expanding middle. I did some collage in the middle, but I did some painting on these. So you can get some ideas about maybe adding some leaves and branches, maybe in different colours, whatever suits you, whatever mood you're in. I did some in blue and I splattered with gold as well on that one. So on this one, I've done the branch and leaves and I've added some collage and then a bit of a frame. So rather than do the painting today, I thought I would just add the collage and show you how I do that. And I start with, again, a little piece of scrap paper. I don't want all of that white, so I'm going to take that off. And I just want to fill in maybe two thirds of the space across the bottom here. I'm not going to go all the way across. So I don't want to lose the sense of the branch going down there. So I'll have a bit of glue on here and I'm going to also add another label just tucked underneath and I want some script I think. I think that one might work. It's big so let's help ourselves take a piece off there so that that can tuck in underneath but I've still got some script showing. 
that works. And again, I think I will add a little bit of tape. So what sort of tape do I want? That's quite delicate music tape. A bit down there. And I like this one because it just reminds me of a picket fence, sort of outdoor gardeny stuff. So I think I'll have a little bit of that there. And then I'm just going to take a gel pen and go around it to give it a frame with some dashes. It's equivalent if you're sewing on paper to just going round with either a running stitch or maybe a zigzag. But obviously on here I'm not going to sew them, I'm just going to do it by hand with a pen. And again I will add a little bit of something on the inside. What should we have? I can't resist the autumnal feel of this design of paper. I don't want it to be too much, so I think what I'll do is take a corner, just tear down. I feel like that will be really nice in there. So I'll add some of that. You can see how it's a project to just get lost in the collage because the folding and the cutting to make the pocket flip in the first place isn't too difficult. So the rest of it is just so much fun. Snip that off. And I feel like it needs, that's quite good, it's got red in it. I feel like it needs something just to balance it down here. So I'll have a little bit of that and I want it to sit on something to give it some emphasis. You can see how once you get going, it just starts to flow. So a small piece there, a small piece of that. That's got something to sit on. I'll just make it sit to the right. Happy with that. So it's some interest. And that's one with a botanical feel and a bit of collage. Shall we have a go at one with a mushroom and maybe a bit of doodle? So here's one I had a go at with a, a doodle mat. This is, I'll be honest, I was I was flipping through one of my books that I filled last year and just so this is my art journal from last year and I need to do a bit more in it I think. Um, I came across came across my doodle page and I thought I quite fancy having a go at doing a few more of these. So I thought I'd bring one or two of those into today's pocket flip. So I played with some lovely paints and added some dots onto the front of one. So why don't we see what we can do to just finish this one off, maybe with... Maybe with, have we got, what have we got? Let's give it something to sit on. In fact, to begin with, I think I'm going to just enhance my boxes. Let's just do something. I'm just gonna add a few leaves in a black pen. Maybe they're rather dry because it's autumn. Just a few squiggly lines and a few leaves, and I'll have one down here. Let's just do some, just do some dots. Anything that comes to mind. So just a little bit of interest, and then I can add whatever collage I like up here. I think I am going to mix things up a bit. All the colours work. I think that might be a bit too much. We'll go down here, go up there, and we'll give it a base. Just go a tiny bit random. That can go on. I'm going to do my usual collage, put glue in the middle and not at the edges, then I can tuck things underneath, like that. Tear it off. That can go under there. I want some green, just a little bit of green. So I'm going to tuck that under there. So I'm choosing to use this bit of paper not for the images on it, but for the colours. 
try and get that under. Yep. I'm going to see if the magic will work with a mushroom. I think it's quite interesting. Yep, I'm just going to have a tiny bit of text to the left. Oh, this is a rather random one. It's a little bit crazy. I think I quite like it. I can go there. I'm covering up some of the edges. And then I'm just going to glue this one down. And maybe a tiny bit more text just across the bottom. give it a whimsical edge, so dash dot, dash dot. I'm just going to say as well, sometimes the most satisfying projects are the ones where you just let yourself go and just get into it and just go with whatever that first instinct says to cut and stick down. So I don't know whether that resonates at all, but maybe we've done the warm up act and we're just in flow. So there I've got one. I'm going to do, I can't resist, a tiny bit on top, maybe there, I quite like that. I want to add a little bit of something in the centre and I really feel that this one needs some of the sympathetic vintage papers so I will just tear a bit of this down and put that inside I quite like this what let me call it dense collage multiple elements all connecting and overlapping and I did have a play at doing something like that this week at my desk and I thought I might use something similar to make some Christmassy cards. So if you're interested in dense collage with multiple images, something a bit different but still lots of fun, let me know if you'd like a video on that. I think I'm going to have a go at doing some anyway at my desk, so it would be lovely to share that with you. And we'll have just something to finish it off. That's better tuck that under there. I think it takes up too much space if I put it on there. So I'm going to have it underlapping by going there, which means I might just steal a little bit of butterfly and put that on too. Move it up, cover up the connecting points there. These are my pocket flips from a single book page here are the process steps if you'd like to make them too. And check out my video where I made those larger pocket flips because I think you'd really enjoy making these. I hope to see you soon.